Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this Blender tutorial where I teach you guys how you can make a rock in Blender in Substance Painter. Last time I showed you how to sculpt this rock and how to uh, make the geometry much lower. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can material this and how you can use Substance Painter to apply a fairly realistic texture to it. So let's jump right in. First you want to unwrap the rock. I'm just going to delete this because I don't need it for now. You want to, sorry, this stupid way Blender handles it. First, you're going to want to unwrap it. Now, there are multiple ways you can unwrap this, but with something this high poly and obnoxious, you can use something in Blender called the Smart UV Project feature, which is makes it incredibly easy to bake, to um, just create UV maps, to use Substance Painter for the textures. It makes it so much easier, and it's the simple click of the U key smart UV project in edit mode. Don't change any of these settings, hit okay. It will take a moment. But once it is done, you will have a UV unwrap of your texture that actually looks very, very good. So um, it's kind of hard to tell here because of how high poly the model is. But you can see that the rock has been unwrapped. Nothing overlays and nothing is gonna, you know, get overlaid. Nothing is, nothing is gonna break in the unwrap. So now that you've unwrapped it, we need to export this into an OBJ. So go file, export, wavefront.obj. I'm going to save this into my tutorial folder. I'm just gonna call it rocktutorial.obj. Hit export. And once that's exported, you now have a file. I'm just gonna save this and load up Substance Painter and I will see you guys in Substance Painter. Okay, now that you have Substance Painter open, go hit File, New, Select, go to wherever you saved your rock and make sure you select the OBJ. Now go to set your texture size to 2048, just because this is the best texture size I've found and you can just leave everything else regular uh, and hit OK. It's going to create the file and once it's loaded up you now have your rock imported into Substance Painter. So right off the bat I want to start by creating the base color for this rock so I'm going to delete this layer here. I'm going to name this base color and I'm going to just lower this into a nice kind of light no that's too light this yeah this looks good so that's the uh, height or not height the color I'm gonna go with I'm gonna change the roughness to maybe 0.8 yeah it looks about right and don't change anything else in fact you can actually disable height and metal and normal because you won't be needing that this is just the base color create a new layer and under the uh, materials you are going to find concrete simple. Drag this into your normal for a new layer, and you're gonna find that the rock is applied a normal map, which gives it fake height. So none of this detail is actually there. It's just a part of the texture. Now this should be only a part of the normal map. This is only a normal map. And you can just adjust this, and uh, this looks too big, so. Uh, here we go. There it is. UV scale. Looks much too big. Much too. There we go. That looks like a good size for the concrete. And you don't have to change the offset really, unless you care to. Uh, you can adjust the cracks. I don't really know how much that affects it. I'm just gonna change the cracks. You can change the dirtiness too, but that is really only a part of color, not really the normal map at all. So we've applied a normal map now. What I want to do next is I want to start applying some, you know, varying uh, textures to this, like some edge wear, because rocks are affected by their environment, and they're affected by how they're shaped. Create a new fill layer. You can, um, you don't actually need to change this except metal. It doesn't even matter if you disable metal or not. Create, a, well, go up to this button and create a black mask. And once you do that, create a generator. Now you could use metal edgeware. Um, it would it would work 
kind of, but I, I prefer to just create a mask editor. And what you wanna do um, before you do any of that, because I forgot to do this part, you have to bake the textures onto it. So just go into texture set settings, bake textures, bake, and, and I didn't create a material for this, so it just says none. So just bake none textures or whatever you happen to name the material, if you did create a material at all. And there we go, now the bake is finished. So once we create that, um, that map, or the uh, generator, you'll see we get this. Now already this looks better than just the solid gray, but I wanna tweak this a little bit. So we wanna use all the curvature. Curvature should be the biggest factor here. And we are going to, we don't want huge, we don't want big, we don't want large. We wanna raise the contrast here. We don't want medium. We don't really want soft. We just want fine and sharp. And I'm gonna raise the contrast even more. Maybe raise fine even more. Go, okay, we're creating nice here. We don't need, I don't, I don't actually adjust the brightness. That was a terrible, terrible idea. I actually am gonna be using a little bit of soft here. So basically what this does, if I enable huge, you can see it, it, it just, um, it just, and if you hit, and if you alt click the mask, you can actually see what it is. Huge, it, it's just like how big it is, like the sharpest is gonna be, you know, the little tiny, tiny little details, like the thinnest stuff is gonna show through. You might even wanna disable that. So it's just like the fine, maybe even no soft here. Maybe all fine. Maybe a little, maybe a little soft. But uh, yeah, so that's actually too much there. We'll just create, that. yeah. Okay, looks good. And I want to adjust the height for this too. So you can, act, so when you do that, it creates like physical height. Height, height, Heinz, get the flame. I don't know why I, don't know why I went all German there, but whatever. Not important, leave me alone. I'm gonna turn off the roughness all the way too. I don't want the height that low. You don't want the height that low. Just maybe there looks good, actually. We'll adjust that a little bit more. There we go. So now we have some nice edge wear on our rock here. I'm going to duplicate the base color layer, and I'm going to move this below the scratches. And I want to create a new black mask once again. Create a new generator, and we're going to use MG Mask Edit or again. And what I want to do here is I actually want the insides of the rock to show. I don't want the outsides. I don't want the edges. I want the concave, which is like the opposite of edges. It's it's what's curved inside. So what we do, turn up curvature, but instead of edges, we do cavities. And you can see that actually completely inverts the effect. And I also want to be using a, a grunge. So you can just uh, go follow my lead and create a nice grunge here. Let's find a good good grunge to use. Yeah, no scratches. Maybe maybe we can find a good rock grunge. Yes, grunge rock. There we go. We're gonna turn up texture all the way up here. And you can see the grunge has now been applied to our map. So now that we've done that, we want to once again adjust the huge, the big. I actually want a lot of huge here because this is um, something that I think is really important to do. And we'll just lower this, change that a bit, maybe more big. Less, uh, it's just a matter of playing around with it. Once you found that, I'm going to go to the base color here and lower it. And now you see we've created two different areas of rock. And we also, and under this mask here, I'm gonna just use a bit of bit of grunge. So uh, actually, I think we need to create a whole new fill there. Oops, wrong one. Uh, right click that, hit fill. And sorry if I'm not explaining absolutely everything I'm doing. I do apologize for that. I know it's a an issue I have with tutorials. Uh, set this to linear dodge add and find a nice dirt. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, we're creating the spots here and histogram position. That just is essentially just contrast. I don't want that scale to be that that uh, small. Turn that up or that large, whatever you want to say. 
Okay, also you can, uh, to see what's going on, you can hold shift and right click this. Right click so you can rotate the environment to have different lighting effects. And let's adjust this even more. There we go. I just want to create a little more contrast here. Scream contrast, yeah. Disorder. Raise the disorder. Just creating more and more contrast here. And I also want to go back to this layer here, and I want to add a texture for this too, because it's too smooth, it's too clean. So we're going to use Grunge Rock as well for this one. Just raise the texture there. You can see we've actually created, it's kind of hard to tell, but we actually have indeed created an actual texture here. And I want to I wanna make sure this, has, this one has height too, the uh, concave. So I'm gonna actually create a height for this and just lower that. All right, now we have a lot more contrast in Iraq here. It's looking good in Iraq, yes, where the war is. But I also want to make sure there's a little bit of very variety in the edges too, because it is too clean here. So once again, I'm gonna create a fill, create a linear dodge layer here. And I want to use dirt again, except this time I'm going to scale it away. Actually, no. Dirt's not going to work here. Perhaps this. Also, make sure you're using triplinear projection. Just makes your life a whole lot easier. And there we go. Balance. Just lower that a lot. See what that kind of effect that's creating. Well, that's not quite the effect I want. I want to create more of a let's see your color dodge perhaps. Hmm. I'm trying to what I want to do is I want to create some extra grunge that spreads out from the um spreads out from the edges, but I'm not actually sure how to do that. And I probably should have learned how to do that. But uh, you know, you you live and you learn. I guess. Eh, no, now you're not buying it. Oh well, that's a shame. Oh, you, oh, there we go. That's that's actually that's kind of what I wanted there. Let's create that effect. Brush pattern. No, we don't want that. Contrast. No. Okay, you know what? Random mode. Yeah, actually, you know what? That creates a nice enough uh, variety there. We've created the scratches. We've created all of that now. Another thing, if you want to create a dirty rock here, and actually, also, if you want to view it in a 4K mode, you can just come down here and set it to 4K. It's going to load up a little red bar there and get all high quality. There we go. Super detailed. Very detailed. Still want to make sure everything is using triplinear. Triplinear is your best friend, man. No joke. Okay, because blend, you know, when you're using the default UV map that Blender gave you, it's it's not exactly going to work perfectly. So you just want to. Triplanar is a really nice, really nice way of UV unwrapping. I actually want to make this more sharp here. And again, this is all just messing around. You know, I'm just showing you the techniques and where you want to go and what you want to use. But it's really up to you on what kind of rock you want to create. You can create a sandstone with the, like a sandstone rock with these same techniques. You can create whatever you want. It is your rock. The world is your rock, and the rock is your oyster, which makes the world your oyster and the oyster your rock. Grammar checks out. Okay. I'm just adjusting the edges here, trying to make it a little sharper. Also not too sharp here. Low contrast a bit. Okay. I think I'm happy with this result. And also, um, sometimes you might not want a perfectly gray rock, so you want to, you know, create a... So, you know, not, not all rocks are perfectly gray, so you can just apply a little orange texture. Not orange, but... Well, yeah, orange. I just use orange. You can also use blue to make it more of a stone, because when it's completely desaturated, you know, it doesn't look horrible. It doesn't look that great either, so... You know, just play around with the tones and the hues. That looks good to me. 
I like this tone and hue. And maybe a little lighter, perhaps. Maybe too saturated. Again, it's all playing around. Just want to find that balance, find what you like. Maybe a little more towards the red side here. Hmm. Also, if you do, if you want to see the environment, you can just. There we go. Beautiful environment here. I think this is too red there. So, let's uh, see how that behaves. And the lighting's actually going to be a lot different in Blender. Keep that in mind too, because uh, this needs to be in real time while Blender does not. So it is mm, quite different. Gonna create a nice dark brown there. Maybe make it a little brighter. Maybe don't. Okay, there we go. So we have successfully created a rock with Blender and Substance Painter. I should have uh, carved out this edge a little more because this this is why you want to connect some of the places so it's not like like oh edge and then an area of darkness edges and then an area of darkness. You want to have some variety in there, but I did not do this for that one. I shouldn't have made that mistake. But I think it looks good. So next thing you're going to want to do so you can use this in Blender is go File, Export Textures, select whatever folder you want to use it in. I have a lot of, a lot of awkward folders, but uh, Rock, there we go, Tutorial. And I'm just going to create a new folder and call this Materials. And voila, select folder and export that. No one needs to, no one needs to hear you, Hanzo. Shut up. And congratulations, you have successfully exported your Substance Painter textures. And you can then use them in Blender. If you do want to see a tutorial on how to, you can use these textures in Blender, be sure to let me know. Otherwise, you can probably find one online. But if you want me to explain it, then I can. So, Yeah, anyway, if you guys did enjoy this tutorial series, be sure to give it a like. Subscribe if you want to see more tutorials similar to this. I'm thinking about doing a lot more with Blender and Substance Painter, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But, um, yes. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.